Aha! Someone gave me a microphone. That's going to be a very big mistake. Hello, MCM Comic Con. How are we feeling? Good. That's good. We're a couple minutes away from starting, but I thought I'd grab the mic and uh, start talking, because that's what I like to do. It's my favorite thing, talking. I've got my fiance and my parents in the front. They can attest. Now, let's see. Have we got any cosplayers in the room? Give us a stand if you're a cosplayer. Let's have a look. Let's have a look. We got a bill. We've got a 12 in the front. We got, oh, what are you two? I can't tell. Constantine. Oh, of course it's Constantine, yes. We've got, I can't see you. Oh, it's a Capaldi. I saw the Sonic. A Whittaker, an Ace, another Capaldi. Animals. <laughs> Unless, that, are you the master from survival? Just fully formed? Because if so, I will have to come over and smash you with a skull. <laughs> That's just to separate the fans from the confused. Good. Good, that's good. Oh, I see a Fez gone up as well. Now, I'm going to very, very slowly introduce our beautiful, beautiful guests. One by one, because we need to make them feel special. And we're going to applaud them. Are we going to applaud them? Good, good. First of all, Tom Scott. No, no, that would be great though, wouldn't it? Right next to him, right next to him. Okay, so, firstly, is a wonderful impressionist and voice actor. You may know him, you may love him. He's also worked with Big Finish somehow. I must get your details. Everybody welcome Chris Walker Thompson. Take your seats, my friend. Up next. Oh, I was tempted to do them as a duo, but no, I'll do it separately. They deserve their own time. Firstly, is companion to the Little Red fan film Doctor. You know her, you love her. It's Meg Shirley. I was going to use your companion name, then I remembered, it's just your name, which is cheating. <laughs> Up next, not the companion, but the doctor himself, the Little Red Doctor, which I think is a bit of a harsh name, but he gave it himself, so it's his fault. Luke Newman! <laughs> and Mr. Tardis. No, I'm kidding. It's the fantastic live streamer and reviewer, Mr. Tardis! Is that first and last name, Mr. Tardis? Biblical. Ah, oh. is there a Mrs. Tardis? Anyway, right. <laughs> so how this is gonna work is the main bulk is gonna be me quizzing these four. There is a question each about each of them, so they should at least get one point each. And then in between, there's random Doki Who questions. So uh, feel free to play along. And if you get more points than them, you, you have the permission to just laugh in their face, because that's what I'll be doing. It'd be hilarious. So shall we start things off? if I can find where I put my book. <laughs> Does anybody see a TARDIS book? <laughs> that went well. Is it around? We would like to apologize for the technical difficulties you are about to witness. <laughs> it's fine, I have backup on my phone. But before I do that, I might as well show what they're competing for. I have three prizes in this bag and the fourth place gets nothing. <laughs> So, for third place, oh, there's the book. <laughs> for third place is a mini Jonathan Petwee Lego figure. The arm's fallen off, but it is in this bag, I promise. There it is, a mini Jonathan Petwee. For second place is a custom 3D printed by lovely Bo in the front, TARDIS key glow in the dark key ring. Pretty good. And for first place is Robots of Death on VHS. <laughs> Honestly, didn't know if that was good or not. I'm going to take that as a fairly positive. Is that good? Is that worth winning? It's valuable. There we go. So, oh, hello, Connor. Good to see you. Right, let's get on with the quiz. You'll all be answering on your whiteboards, and you will be answering on your pen and paper, because they ran out of whiteboards. Question one. This is about Chris Walker Thompson. Oh dear. As I mentioned, he is a fantastic impressionist, but he doesn't do everything, not one man could. So which of these three can he not do an impression of, or hasn't done an impression of? Maybe he can. Peter Capaldi, Patrick Troughton, or David Tennant? Write down your answers now. This is the exciting bit where you just watch them write. 
Look at them go. All right, have we all got an answer? Okay, well, let's go to Will first. Uh, I put tenant. Tenant, Luke? Tenant. 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 Oh, is yours not on? Hello. Oh, yeah. there we go, yay! <laughs> David Tennant. David Tennant, and Chris? Well, I can do all three, technically, but not this one very well. So you're right, I'll give you that. David Tennant, point for each. Although I'll give Chris an extra point because he corrected me. <laughs> it was always going to happen. I looked through everything and I couldn't find one of you doing Tennant. Well, I didn't say it was good. <laughs> well, he's got me there. I Number don't think two the are, to be honest. <laughs> is a Doctor Who question. But not just any Doctor Who question, it's about, you love it, the official Doctor Who YouTube channel. It's the best thing. But what I want to know about the official Doctor Who YouTube channel, actually, Chris, could you do official Doctor Who YouTube channel? <sighs> well, let me just let you know, I have a bit of a cold, so it's really helping this Peter Capaldian voice at the moment. Good. So, what's the line? Don't forget to subscribe to the official. Don't forget to subscribe to the official Doctor Who YouTube channel. <laughs> dance, and what's the day dance. of the devil's hour? Oh, and yeah. that was a prime. Oh, I've got him started now. <laughs> but about the official YouTube channel, I want to know what the most viewed video on that channel is. I'll give you a hint. It's a scene from Doctor Who. Yeah. Does anyone need more of a hint than that? I'm happy to give an extra hint. It is from a Matt Smith episode. I'm There's a couple of people checking their phones to be like, oh, I, I, I know this answer, yes. Anyone who is checking their phones, please whisper. No. <laughs> Tell you what, how about some bo possible bonus points? Potential five bonus points. Name any of the top five most viewed videos on that channel. Just think of the most iconic moments from Doctor Who. You know, like the Absorbaloft. <laughs> and Delta and the Bannerman. Can we get a cheer for Delta and the Bannerman? And the Wrong. And the Merka. Big up the Merka. Love him. No. All right, I'll give him a moment to think. Give him a moment to think. And if we have time at the end, there will be a, a chance for a Q&A, by the way. So get your questions thinking now. Oh, look at him think. Look at him think. What's going through your mind? Well, Meg, what's going through your mind? Not a lot, and that's the problem. I see. How about yeah. you, Luke? What's going through your mind? I only got one scene I can think of. Interesting, interesting. I'll give him a few more seconds. And then I'll start going down the line. Well, there's only one writing currently. So that, uh, you, we can tell who's, <laughs> who's potentially got the most points here. Okay, well, I'll start with you, Chris. What are you thinking? Uh, I think I'm gonna go with the regeneration to Capaldi. Oh, so 11 to 12. Yeah. Okay, and you've also got? Rings of Akaten speech. Okay, so interesting choices, good. Meg, what have you got? I put 11's regeneration. So 10 to 11? Yeah. Interesting, okay. Anything else? Uh, the Day of the Doctor, the All 13 part. Uh, okay, good choices. Luke? Uh, the All 13 Save Gallifrey scene and the 10th Doctor's regeneration. Okay, they've clearly worked together here. I should have just paired them up. I'm already making them share a microphone. I generally don't know the answer. I'm actually interested to find out. Well, I don't good care thing I have the answer. And Will, <laughs> what do you think? I thought I knew, and then you've got me doubting. Uh, the, Van, the Van Gogh Museum trip. What, for number one? Uh, yeah. Okay, anything else? Uh, for the top five. For the top five. Um, 12 to 13. Yep. 10 to 11. Right. The Series 8 trailer. Ooh. Uh, Jodie Whittaker revealed the right. Wimbledon hoodie. And that, yeah, and then the Van Gogh trip. Okay, so we'll start from five and work our way down. The fifth most viewed is Capaldi to Whitaker regeneration. So I believe you all put a regeneration, but only one of you got a point. Good. I saw you only put That's regeneration, fine, yeah. and you could have totally cheated. All right. Oh, sucks to be him. Number four, defeating the Absorbaloff. Genuinely, <laughs> the Absorbaloff made the top five. <laughs> How? I'm sure Peter Kay is delighted. It's the yeah. genuine article. It sure is. <laughs> I was shocked. Anyway, number three, the Rings of Akaten speech. So, Chris, that was a point to you, oh, my brilliant. friend. And number two, 11 meeting 10 in Day of the Doctor. So, not the wrong Day of the Doctor scene, I'm afraid. And number one, Vincent van Gogh in the museum. It's where's the TARDIS point. 
It's also now a good time to say you should be totaling up your own scores as we go. Ah. Oh. Just keep a, keep a little note, a little tally. Yeah, good, right. Before we begin, how many have I got so far? <laughs> Thank Two you very start. much. Thank you. Thanks, Jim. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on to question number three. This question is about Mr. Tardis. Oh, <laughs> you shouldn't be worried. The suspense is killing me. <laughs> now, as I said, Mr. Tardis, actually your surname is Reviews. It's Mr. Tardis Reviews. So he reviews lots and lots of different episodes, especially ones with those pesky Daleks. Oh, can't stand Daleks. But the very first review up on your channel is also a Dalek story. But out of these three, which is it? Is it Dalek from series one? Genesis of the Daleks or Victory of the Daleks? That was very loud in my ear. Thoroughly enjoyed it though. I was very on pitch. All right, let's see. Let's, we'll go to Mr. Tardis last, as that kind of is the giveaway. We'll start with Luke. What have you got? Uh, Victory of the Daleks. Victory of the Daleks. Meg? Victory of the Daleks. Okay, Chris? Genesis. Oh, and Mr. Tardis, what is it? Victory. Victory ah. of the Daleks! One point to Luke, one point to Meg, one point to Mr. Tardis. Nil point for Mr. Capaldi over here. Question number four. This is a community question because one of my favorite content creators, apart from these four, obviously, is a man by the name of Clever Dick Films. He does big era reviews. You might have seen them. And he's also done companion ones. But which of these three is the wrong one, basically, is the question. Because he's only done two of these three. That's how multiple choice works. Is it Ian Chesterton, the Brigadier, or Jamie McCrimmon? Which of these has he not done an era review of yet? And for some potential bonus points, because he's not done all of the Doctors yet, which doctors has he not yet done? Which TV doctors specifically has he not done? I'll give them a moment to think. It's very tricky. Very tricky. Anyone here watched any of Clever Dick Films' reviews? We got some? Yeah, good. Good. No. <laughs> <laughs> well, you should. This is going to be a shot in the dark. We'll see. <laughs> I, 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 like, I prefer it when they don't know. It makes the quiz a little bit more interesting, I think you'd agree. Oh, I thought that was Nick Briggs in the crowd. That confused me. Hello, my friend. Good to meet you. It wouldn't adjust. Now, let's see. Have we all got answers? Okay. Will, let's start with you. Uh, Ian, I believe, uh, for the ones he's not done, Doctors, 11 onwards. So 11, 12, 13. Okay, okay. Luke? Uh, the Brigadier. Okay, the Brigadier. And Meg? the Doctor. Oh, sorry, continue. Oh, sorry, uh, the doctor's uh, the 14th doctor, David Tennant, and uh, Shooty's 15th doctor. <laughs> <laughs> Fair. Meg? I uh, put the brig, and then I put the war doctor. Oh, yeah, uh, yeah. Very good. And Chris? Uh, I did Ian Chesterton, because I don't know the answer. <laughs> and I took a stab at Whittaker, because she's only just finished. But I realised I should have gone to Shooty. That was an actually genius stroke of <laughs> Well, the answer is... Ian Chesterton for the first half of the question. So despite not knowing the answer, Chris actually got it right. And then for the doctors, he's actually only done up until number 10. So if you've written Smith, John Hurt, Capaldi, Whittaker, Joe Martin, Shooter Gatwa, you get a point for each. Thank God. <laughs> Tell you what, as that thank God has reminded me, let's do a points check. Will, how many points have you got so far? Uh, I have McGann points. McGann points. Luke? I have Tom Baker points. Tom Baker points. Meg? Pertwee points. Pertwee points. Chris? Tom Baker. <laughs> well, it's close. <laughs> For last place, it's very, very close. <laughs> Question number five. I've knocked all of our faces down. That was a bit rude of me, wasn't it? Yeah, you can stay on the floor. Anyway. Question number five. This is a Meg question. Oh, Ooh, how exciting. Ooh. Meg, you've appeared in lots of DW2012 episodes at this point. Lots of fan film episodes. Would you agree? Yes. Care to comment? What? Overruled. Oh. 
<laughs> but which was canonically her first? Is it birth of an angel, reflection, or glitch? Birth of an angel, reflection, or glitch? Is this where I find out she's made a cameo in one of the first ones and I've completely buggered my own question? I hope not. <laughs> okay, let's see what we got. Chris. Reflection. Luke. Reflection. Will. Birth of an angel. Meg. Reflection. Reflection. Oh. <laughs> Luke, why did you sound so confused? You're the showrunner. Because she appears in Eternal Darkness. The Damn remaster. it, I knew it. That was my and second I, I'm not sure what comes first. <laughs> This is the hard part. You know what? They I've never got did the invite hardest you to host job QI, in they? this room. I have the struggles. Moving on. Question number six. This is a complete the quote. Never be cruel. Never be cowardly. Blank. And for bonus points, who said it and in what episode? It's not just one word, by the way, the blank. Just a f it's a few words. Have a think amongst yourselves. Really think. Use your brain. No, I can't do a Sylvester McCoy impression, so this bit doesn't work. <laughs> can't even play the spoons. I'm disgraceful. Let's see, let's see. Okay, let's start with... She's still writing. Chris! I can't remember. <gasps> no! <laughs> I am the worst panellist ever invited on. Take, take a guess. Take a guess. Oh, this is going to revoke my membership. Um, Correct. We have the power to do that. <laughs> I'm sure Capaldi said it at one point, but I can't remember the full thing. Okay, so your guess is Capaldi. Pick a random Capaldi episode. I'm really helping here, aren't I? This is good content. <laughs> I've never watched a show. It's a lie. <laughs> it's a sham. Well, let's just say... I thought it was the one with the phasers. The uh, phasers. Capaldi and the phasers. That's his pick. Meg. No, his last one I'll go for. The last one. Twice upon a time. Okay. Was it the war doctor in the 50th day of the doctor? I don't know what the quote ends with. Though. You don't know what the quote is. That's the main part of the question and two people have failed to answer. It's... Looking good. Luke. No, I'm going to say the war doctor from the 50th, but again... Are you just... I, who's copying off who here? No one. This is an outrage. What was that, Meg? Is that Tom Baker? <laughs> you did. You did write Tom Baker. You scr she scribbled it out. And um, Mr. Tardis. Um, the end of the quote, never give up, never give in, and it's the war doctor in Day of the Doctor. The answer is, never be cruel, Never be cowardly, and never ever eat pears. It's Peter Capaldi from Twice Upon a Time. Oh. So somehow, you got two points. Thank you very much. Please that, show your board to the audience. That's so audacious, I won't contest it. He wrote help and got two points. <laughs> Thank I you, mean, whiteboard. I mean, also, Mr. Tardis, you're technically right, but I'm not going to give you the points anyway. I respect the audacity of it. I respect Good. it. Never yeah. be cruel, never be cowardly. And what was the last bit? And never ever eat pears. Never ever eat pears. There we go. It's like he's in the room. <laughs> question <laughs> price. Question number seven. It's a Luke question. It's a Luke Newman question. Can you believe it? Now, Luke, you've been around a long time. You're getting old. And so's your channel, mate. It's been a long time. But I want to know the exact date you created that channel. I want to know the day, I want to know the month, and I want to know the year. Do you know any of those three, Luke? Uh, <laughs> we will find out. Yeah. Before the panel, I said you should all at least get one point right. I don't think he will. <laughs> Tell you what, I'll be nice. One point for each. So a point for the year, a point for the month, and a point for the day. So if you don't know any of them, just write a possible one down. And much like Chris did a minute ago, you might just accidentally get a point. Give them a moment. It would be comedy if none of them got it right. Because we've got the man it's about and his fiance. Good stuff. Have we all got an answer? All right, Will, we'll start with you. 
Okay, I put July 15th, 2010. Interesting. Question Luke? mark. 15th of April, 2009. Okay, Meg? Oh <laughs> September 23rd, 2012. Okay. That's <laughs> and Chris? I tried to work it out in reverse. I thought <laughs> DW 2012 might be a clue. So I went 2012, that's probably wrong. Uh, then I had 12 months to choose from. I just chose February, because I like February. It's a good month. And uh, 21st, because it's... Uh, that's not today's date, is it? No, mind. no, it's just 21st. You know, I loved the process. It's part of the fun. <laughs> the answer is April the 16th, oh. 2009. Oh. So, Luke, you got one day off. That's not I, bad. I think I did it about Why midnight. Why are you called 2012? <laughs> That's what I was thinking. Why well, are you shockingly, it's That's wrong. when the series started. Damn. And 2009 was taken, so... You were future-proofing. Wait, so I DW 2012 is just because 2009 was taken? Yeah, and, to, and 2010, <laughs> so I just skipped. This is the fun tidbits you, hear, you came here to learn. Moving on to question number eight. Another community question, because... As you all know, there are a lot of audio productions. Not just Big Finish, there's plenty on YouTube. But which of these three have I made up? TT Productions, Man at Desk Productions, DWF Productions. And any bonus points for any others you can name. This is unlimited points here, potentially thousands, if you can just name as many as you can. Look at them go. Have any of them noticed that I've just been holding up the answer book this entire time? At one point, I put it by Mr. Tardis's feet. He could have caught the whole answers. Excellent. I'm a good host. Am I a good host? Yes. Timid. I like it. Can get a bit more, please, for Jack. A little bit yeah. more? Yeah. Yeah. Validation. I mean, he's got to carry us throughout this whole thing. Give him a bigger physically. round of applause. Come on. They're not getting off stage with their legs. I've got to physically carry him off. <laughs> okay, let's see what we got. Let's go with Luke first. Uh, man at desk. It's the fake one. Okay. Yeah. Any other ones? Is there any others for the bonus points? Oh, I didn't put any. Sorry. Noted. I went DWF. You went for that for a fake? That's the fake, yeah. Any others for the um, extra points? What other audio? Legitimate Other audio, audio productions, audience. yes. Overton. Uh, there's the ones I did. Uh, and then one, if anyone knows, Time Tunnel, that was one. But you wouldn't have heard of them, so it's probably not a point. Noted. <laughs> Meg? Uh, I put Man at Desk. Okay. And then I put Fractured Timeline, because they do audios. And Overton audios. Very nice, very nice. And Will? Uh, I got Man at Desk for the fake. <laughs> and I named Spectral Horizons and Farris Features. Very nice. Well, all of you can get extra points for the ones you wrote down as extra. And the fake one, the people at the front are giggling because they know. <laughs> the fake one is DWF Productions. It literally stands for Doctor Who Fake. I made it up last night. Man at Desk is, <laughs> is a good friend of the ones in the front row. So they're going to have We've fun when they watch it. We've just suspended everyone. <laughs> Sorry, Dom. <laughs> oh, yeah. And Russell on Productions is in the front row. He's got a nearly 1,000 subscribers. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Russell on Productions, give him a hand. <laughs> and also, Dom, stand up. Give him a hand as well. He does some amazing audios. The answer was in front of your faces all along. <laughs> I like breaking friendships. I really am the seventh doctor. Uh, now, Dom, if you want to hand in your resignation, I understand. <laughs> now, before we get on to the final question, I think we should do another points check. So, Will, how many points have you got? Um, tenant, ten points. Tenant points. Luke? Peter Davison, I'm Peter afraid. Peter Davison points. Meg? Colin Baker points. Colin Baker points. And Chris? Matt Smith. <gasps> oh! You could feel that through the room. Fantastic. Now, the final question. We've done one about Will. We've done one about Luke. We've done one about Meg. We've done one about Chris. Now, do you need to do the one that actually matters? It's me. Hi. None of you know my name. And I'm not going to say it because I want the confusion just to fill the room. Now, this is not my first time at MCM Comic Con. I've had the privilege to do this three times. This 
is my third batch. Not bad. Not, no, it's, it's fine. Yeah, sorry, we let you down a bit there, mate. Nah, it's fine. You'll, you'll leave it up to me later. But I want to know, because I'm, I'm a forgetful soul, who are all of the panellists I've had so far? I want to know the name of every panellist, every single one, from all three of my current panels. This instant, now, right. They were just looking at me. Yeah, go, now. We all enjoying the quiz? Woo. Got one woo. One woo and some tepid applause. I'll take it. Look at them right. What's going on in their minds? My goodness me. Again, fascinating, isn't it? To watch the human mind at work. I'm going a bit David Attenborough. Here we see the tepid nerds whittling away on their whiteboards and one pad. Wondering how they got here, what they're doing, and why they're doing it all unpaid. <laughs> Have we all got all of our answers, or are we needing a few more minutes? Because I can ramble away. I think I've, all, I've got who I can. Yeah, are we all good? Yeah. Okay. I have the full list here, but I am going to... Tell you what, turn around your boards, you three, because we can see your answers, so we know we're not cheating. You've been writing down on the same piece of paper. So, Will, read out what you've got. There's one I've forgotten, and... If I it's one of the two in the front row... Oh, it's, okay, so... <clears throat> you're at Rassilon Productions, mm -hmm. Philip Hawkins, yes. Don Martin, mm. Josh Carr, mm. Abby Louise. Mm. There's a sixth who I can't remember, and it breaks my heart. Oh, it's going to um, break someone else's heart much and, bigger. Well, um, Chris Walker-Thompson, Meg, Luke, me. Very nice. I noticed that two of these, uh, well, one of these persons. Okay, yeah, just the one has forgotten the four they're on stage with. So here's the full list. <laughs> it's impressive, isn't it? I specified three. I did a whole spiel. Weren't listening. The full list. Russell on Productions. There he is. Philip Hawkins, Dominic G. Martin, Abby Louise, Josh Carr, who's also in the audience over there. Hello, Josh. Jude Lavis, I nearly fell off the stage. Mr. Jude. Tardis, Chris Walker-Thompson, Meg Shirley, and Luke Newman. So give yourself a point for each. I want to note that only one of these people on stage has seen the other two. But I forgot Jude. I'm so sorry, Jude, if it's you're watching Jude. this. It's Jude. I love oh. you, Jude. I don't believe him. Don't believe his lies. Good, right. We'll let them tottle up their scores and we'll see who's won. Remember, this is first place. I'll put that there. I'll let them collect it themselves. They've been sat down, so lazy. Pertwee, who I will fix. <laughs> and the key ring that's in here somewhere. There it is. So, let's see the scores. Chris, how many you got? Well, we're off the doctors now. Um, 18. 18. I wonder who that's going to be. I can't wait to watch this in a few decades' time. Meg. James Corden. <laughs> Get <laughs> off my stage. <laughs> Meg. Uh, Matt Smith. Oh, okay. Luke. I have Paul McGann. And Mr. Tardis. I have 19. Oh, so... Our winner, Mr. Tardis, collect your prize. In second place, Chris, come and get your key ring. Straight on his keys. And Meg, come and get your, at, at this current time, broken put. We go. And Luke, c come on up. Come on up, Luke. Okay, I suppose. Come on up, buddy. So, uh, what happened? I think nerves got the better of me. I could oh. have done better. I hate to see it. Well, I've disappointed the fans. <laughs> Mom, I'm sorry. You know, do we forgive him? Yeah, give him a round of applause. Luke Newman, everybody. Well, I do believe we still have some time left. So if you, yes, we do. If you have a question, pop your hand up and I'll come and hunt you down. We got one that shot up over here. Oh, hello. What's your name? Mummy. My mother, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> What's your question? 
When are you going to get round to doing another community show? Oh, I see. OK, I didn't expect to get called out by my mother at the first question. I haven't released an episode in a while. The last one I did was a cosplay one, then a time fracture one. That was really cool. I'll do one later, all right? Good, good question. <laughs> anyway, anyone got a better one? It's not going to be hard. Anyone got a question? Anyone, anyone, anyone? <laughs> What's your name? Gemma. Nice to meet you. My fiance, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> What's your question? Um, when's the next episode of Doctor Who Row coming out? I'm not answering that. <laughs> They're making fun of me now. We got one at the back. Good. Thank Christ. Okay. Hello, what's your name? Uh, Aidan. Good to meet you, my friend. What's your question? Uh, it's for our DW 2012. Um, when's uh, the next episode coming out? <laughs> <laughs> DW 2012, well, what is it? Come on. Well, it's uh, just right there. <laughs> we are currently doing uh, some reshoots on it, so it's taking a bit longer. But, you know, things you've got to do to make it look decent <laughs> and be happy with it as well. The answer is coming soon. That's the one, Jack. Thanks. Fantastic. <laughs> Coming soon. Any questions? Oh, we got one here. Oh, hello. I know your name. What's your name? <laughs> Connor. Good to meet you, Connor. What's your question? Uh, to all of you, quick thoughts on the recent episode that went out this time last week. Oh, Power of the Doctor. We'll go around the line. Will, what's your thoughts? Uh, so my review is dropping in the next few days, but I really, really liked it. Could I you was... just plug yourself? <laughs> yeah. Coming out soon. <laughs> like, subscribe. Continue. Uh, yeah. I by the end of it, uh, I was really just emotionally drained because it really hit all the bullseyes I wanted it to. I thought it was a really good high note. And yeah, really impressed by it. Very nice. Luke, what are your thoughts? Oh, I thought it was brilliant. I did tear up a bit when uh, Ian came on. I was like, oh, that was there nice. he is. Yeah, but now it was a really good episode and nice send off for Jodie as well. Fantastic. Meg, your thoughts? Yeah, I thought it was really, really good. I think... I'm a massive fan of Ace, so I was just happy she was back. I just spent the whole episode just watching Ace, like, oh my god, I can't believe she's back. Who's so, Ace? Yeah, I was happy in my best place. Who's Ace? Excuse me? What? what? Chris, your thoughts? It was alright, wasn't it? <laughs> uh, no, I, I was watching it with, uh, with my now wife. Woo! <laughs> and uh, and uh, I, just, I, I think I enjoyed it a bit more than she did. She's not really a big fan. But every now and again, I'll go... <laughs> That's Ace. That's Peter Davison. That's Colin Baker. And she just gone, oh, right, OK. <laughs> no, I really, really enjoyed it. I thought it was, uh, well, better than I was expecting. Um, That's but always I nice. I thought it was a really good send-off for Jody. No idea why Rasputin was involved. Um, but otherwise, I thought it, I just enjoyed it. I, at the end of it, I enjoyed it. And that's something I haven't done in a little while. Fair enough. Give us a cheer if you liked it. Mixed. Anyone got another question? Anybody? Oh, there's hands shut up over there. I'm on the way. Oh, I can't see where I'm going. Hello, my friend. What's your name? Um, Oli. Good to meet you, my friend. What's your question? Uh, it's for uh, DW22. What, what was your favourite episode to work on? Like, what, what was your favourite production to work on? Favourite fan film that you've worked on. What is it going to be? Is it the one that uh, I'm as in? As in our own or another fan film that we've worked on? Your run. Your one. Mine. Oh. Uh, ooh. Is this where we find out you like directed Day of the Doctor or something? Like, oh, well, oh, we yeah, made this fan well. film. <laughs> um, probably one of the episodes that hasn't come out yet. Oh, for God's which sake. Which is probably... This is what, okay, I interviewed him last year, and I kept asking him questions like, oh, what's your favourite moment? What, what's this? What's that? And they go, oh, it's not out yet. Oh, that's good for an interviewer. Thanks, Luke. Pick Wait, one that's out, please. Pick one that's out. If you could. Oh. Vengeance of the Bloodline. There we go. There's a proper yeah. answer. Good. <laughs> because it was nice to finally get it out. <laughs> Fair point. Any other questions? Oh, one shot up over there. I'm on the way. Hello, my friend. What's your name? Uh, my name's Stuart. It's for DW2012. Uh, what's your writing process for writing fan films? Oh, good question. Good question. And you two are popular Ooh. today. Um... Weirdly, I get a lot of good ideas when I'm in the shower. That happens a lot. If you want good ideas, yeah, <laughs> come round. Um, I just kind of like, just, I sit there and I listen to a lot of music. I watch a lot of other films, media, get inspiration in the from shower. things. 
Yeah, in the show, it's great. <laughs> Have you got a whiteboard in the shower? You're just like, oh, I've got an idea. I'll make Dom do this. Yeah, I've just got a I've sharpie and all our tiles are just covered. Mm. It's like that um, Stephen Hawking film, just writing on the windows. That's it, yeah. Yeah, yeah or Capaldi with the, the chalk on the floorboards. <laughs> Um, yeah, it's just I just get ideas from things, and then I just listen to music a lot, and yeah, that's just my process. Very nice. I mean, you just sit in a room for a long, long time. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's a writer for you. Good stuff. Uh, oh, we got one up at the air over there. The man with the fizz. It's a woman with the fizz. What's your name? Um, uh, Poppy. I'm going to be a little bit evil here, but which this is for all of you. Which era was better, Davies or Moffat? <laughs> Davies. Moving on. Uh, go on then, you four. Chris, Davies or Moffat? I didn't hear the question, sorry. Davies or Moffat, that's why I repeated it. Sorry, I felt like a very senior man here. Just... <laughs> sorry, where am I? Um... Sorry, Davies, Davies or Moffat? Yes, era-wise, what's better? Uh, I think Davies had uh, an idea where it was going, and when hurdles came his way, he knew how to adapt to it. Um, like, for example... Bernard Cribbins turns up for one Christmas special, and then before you know it, he's, uh, he's regular, and that's mainly because the, the actor playing Donna's dad died in production, and he quickly managed to turn that into something. You know, Wilf was there at the regeneration. You know, it's just the, the genius of that. Moffat, I find, has great ideas, but not necessarily the narrative to link everything. But I think there's a load of brilliant moments that he's done. I just think he's doesn't link he's not quite good at linking them but I think Davis that's why I'm looking forward to Davis coming back because I think he's got a good vision of where it's going it'll be different to what we've had and I think it'll be brilliant good answer Mr. Tardis uh, for me it's Davis but it's because it came out I, Eccleston was my doctor and that's when I was really getting into the show uh, I love a lot of Moffat stuff like Heaven Sent as one of the best episodes in the show um, I also think that Moffat was he'd repeat a lot of his tropes so you could actually see a lot of twists coming from a mile away but he is an incredibly clever writer but I think Davis just knows which heartstrings to tug when to do it and he hits you with such precision that there's a reason why End of Time is a bit of a messy story but we still look back on those Wilf and Ten scenes and the, like, those lines like just say I don't want to go and half the audience will start crying. They're doing it quietly, but half the audience is now it's, in... It's on the inside, Uncontrollably yeah. weeping. Oh, the absolutely, The yeah. he said, I don't want to go, it's a bit backfired on him now, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's karma. We're anything. almost all now saying, let it go, David. <laughs> You're better than this. We've seen Broadchurch. You're capable of so much more. <laughs> and Luke and Meg, Davis or Moffat? Davies, probably, for me. Davies and mm -hmm. Luke? Uh, Davies for me as well. We're all Davies stands up Is this here. where Moffat like appears at the back to... <laughs> I mean, you he was here I, I think you're fine. We recreate Dracula when he's behind the fence. <laughs> <laughs> Any other? Oh, we got two at the front. I'll go with you first. What's your name? Hello, my name is Rory, Rassam Productions. Hello, everyone. Um, Hello. My questions are, how do you deal with creative burnout? And looking back at your journeys on YouTube through retrospect, uh, how would you kind of sum it all up and, uh, from beginning to now? Ooh. Interesting. Okay, well, we'll tackle the first half first. Who wants to chime in? Creative writing, how are we doing with it? Burnout? Anyone got good, good answer for burnout? I get burnouts before I even write the script. <laughs> I, I, I come up with some ideas, so when I'm driving, I end up acting them out. And then before I manage to get home and write them, that idea's gone. <laughs> and then I sort of then, then, then I'm like sort of going, no, what was it? What was it? It was this, it was that. Eventually, some of them do stick. Uh, but I find it's just a lot of ideas I just can't get to paper quick enough. No, fair enough. Do we, do we agree? Do we agree with the writing burnout? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm really bad at creative burnout. Oh, right. <laughs> I really struggle. <laughs> um, I get ideas, and then, like, same with Chris, you just can't get it done. Like, you know the scenes, you know where the story's going, but it's the bits in between on how this links to this. Um, yeah, I'm very bad at creative burnout. When I burn out, I fully burn out. Fair enough. And Will, anything? Yeah, burnout's tough. Uh, when you, I think it's just to try and mix up what you do as much as possible, and not just online, but in like outside as well. Whether it's like with your friends and family, or just a different hobby or something, something that you can get away from your creative or online work entirely, which can inform the creative work as well. But I think it's just having that variety outside of. The, the work outside of the grind. Good, good. And the second half was? 
Okay, retrospect. So I'll rephrase it to make it easier to answer or quicker to answer. Looking back, what is something you could tell yourself starting out on your sort of YouTube or voice acting or impressionist journey? Uh, we'll start with Will. I have a schedule, please, Will. Do it. <laughs> um, yeah, because uh, I, I, there's often like maybe two or three years where I can do consistent output and then a few years where I'm not able to do anything and then I have to come back and YouTube hates the inconsistency. Uh, so it's just about trying to, you, you know, have a rotor or have a routine or something. Get up at the same time every day if you can. Uh, and yeah, uh, yeah, we'll enjoy the next 10 years. <laughs> and Luke, how about you? Um, take my time and really enjoy it because mm. I did find a lot of time flew past and then I found myself redoing everything again because I'm just looking back going, oh, why did I do this? <laughs> uh, Meg, how about you? Maybe from, a, from an acting standpoint? Sort of having more confidence, I guess. Or sort of just actually from the start believing in what you're doing, essentially. Because, I mean, it is a process. You sort of grow up and you mature and you, like, improve and whatnot. But it's just telling yourself to just try it and go for it and not be so like held back in terms yeah. of what you want to do. Very Otherwise nice. you won't I don't know ever about get mature, it. at least for us lot. <laughs> <laughs> and Chris, how about you? Um, I've never really... I, the thing is, I, I tried to do the YouTube thing years ago, back when YouTube sort of started, and I just could never commit to doing something that regular. And in a way, I'm okay with that, because most of the ideas I've ever had have always been on a whim and then I'll just put it out. And then it'll be a while till the next whim. And then I'll look back on those whims and go, that wasn't very good, or I'll be really proud of it or something. One of the two. And then it'll be a, a long time. So essentially, don't be hard on yourself if you can't be creative all the time. And uh, that next whim will come along before you know it. No, very good answers all round. Any other questions? Oh, there's one at the back. I'm on the way. Hup, 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 hup. What's your name, my friend? Adam. Adam. Um, what's your favorite TARDIS interiors and what do you want to see in Shooty's new interior? Ooh, favorite TARDIS interior and what do you want out of Shooty's? Anyone got a good answer? Pop your hand up. Um, um, my, my favorite interior is Capaldi's because I love the levels, the bookcase, the rotors at the top. And whenever Rachel Talale is directing that interior, you're in for a good time. Um, and we're going to have Talale directing the first of the next year's specials. So, Ooh, are we? Uh, yeah, she's yeah. doing it. Yeah, so she, she's... Lovely. She, she filmed the regeneration scene at the end of Power of the Doctor. Ah. Um, so, yeah. Uh, so, for shooty, just levels, something fun so that the directors have variety in there. Because I think they're we're maybe a bit restricted by Whittaker's, which I'm sure looks great when you're there. But I think they found it difficult to work around the claws that were there. Yeah. Yeah, that was the vibe I got. But yeah, Capaldi's is my favorite. Very nice. Uh, any, ag any agreement? Any disagreement? Oh, I Favorites? agree. The, the Capaldi set is amazing. No, absolutely. Because I uh, got a chance to run around it once. Yes, I've seen that picture. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't even know how I managed to do it. But it was... Uh, did anyone do the Mission Dalek or hear of that competition a while I, ago? I, I did. Back in Series <laughs> 9 came I out. I lost. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Some people ask me, can you do your Capaldi for me? And I thought, no, because I know I have to do it for everyone. And then Rob Ritchie, who does all the animations, this is before he did all the animations now, he then said, uh, I've got an idea, Chris, uh, would you mind doing that then? And I said, yeah, all right, why not? Go on. And he won. He was one of the winners, along with uh, Matthew Toffolo and everything else. And we ended up going to Cardiff. And uh, they had, <laughs> out of the groups of us, they said, you can bring us up to three plus ones, really. It's so a plus three, really. And, uh, that is one, how maths work. It is. And uh, one group sensibly brought their family, the rest just brought their mates. So one that had this little kid, and this was beautiful. Uh, they let him, of course, go forward. Oh, the other, you know, the rest of us were like, no, we'll let you have this, come on. He got to push the doors open to the TARDIS, and if anyone's been there, it's a 360 degree set. Once you push those doors open, you're inside the whole TARDIS. It's, you know, and he got to do the honors of doing it. And it was amazing to watch him do that. And we, we all felt envious of him and hated him in a way. Um, but then they said, two hours, make yourself at home. Oh, did we? We ran laps in there. Oh and it God. was fantastic. I like the idea that like, Peter Capaldi comes into the TARDIS ready for the day's filming, just watching you. Sprint. And he came up. He what? came up to visit. 
came up in his outfit. He was filming the Husbands of River song, so he came up in the red velvet. And although there was a child running around very excitedly, I'm not talking about myself, the other one, um, there was, uh, I was the loudest one who went, oh my God! <laughs> and, <laughs> and Capaldi was just, uh, annoyed, and he picked up the little boy and sat him on the console, oh. which is beautiful. It's still one of the most heartwarming things I've ever seen in my life. That's amazing. He wouldn't have had, he would have difficulty picking me up at this uh, 16 stone. <laughs> I'm sure he would have tried. Bless him. But no, that was an amazing clip. But no, for the shooties one, back on topic, sorry, oh, yes. I digress. Uh, I just thought it was a lovely story to share, Peter Capaldi. It was. Um, but I like something brighter. I don't want to, I don't mean to sound old. I'm only 31, for God's sake. But I still like, sort of think, I like to see things more. If you had something to the scale of Capaldi's, but a little bit brighter and less steampunk, it would be fantastic for me. Oh, no, absolutely. And um, Megan Luke, what are we thinking? Favourite TARDIS? What do you want out of shooties? Uh, Twelfth Stardust, mm. and for shooting, I, I hope it's we good see to get like sort of the wide range of answers. <laughs> uh, I hope to see like some more rooms, mm. because the TARDIS is a control room. The Doctor shouldn't be living in there all the time, so I'm hoping yeah. we can see just or just a puts a bed more. in the console room, just yeah, like just yeah. a sleeping bag underneath. <laughs> <laughs> I absolutely loved that in the 80s when you had other, they had their own rooms. Yeah, yeah it was great. Yeah. And it looked ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> so with the, with the Leakley Bible, you're able to see like the 1990s series that they never made after Paul McGann. They were going to like have a staircase going up to like a viewing platform so you could see where yeah. you'd landed and different, like so stuff like that. It, I, I'm not saying take everything from the Leakley Bible, the Sibes, <laughs> um, but I think stuff like that to really open up the space and make it feel more like home as opposed to a craft. Excellent answer. Meg, what was your favorite TARDIS? My favorite was um, Eleven's, but the first TARDIS. See, that's mine. Yeah, that is I, my I, favorite as well. I like, like the glass floor and the fact it's quite like a homely style of a TARDIS. Like the same, yeah. it's not just like a craft ship. Yeah, and it suited Smith as well. I think it really did, more yeah. so than his next one. I think that suited Capaldi more yeah. so. Something like that, no. maybe. Yeah. Uh, no, very good answer. Any more questions? Oh, hello. What's your name? Uh, Dominic, how old are you? I'm 28 years old. Ah, oh, here we go. Oh. Sorry, I couldn't help it. What's your question? Okay, so what are your thoughts, for all panellists, what are your thoughts on David Tennant being a new numbered incarnation of the Doctor? As in, like, specifically, 14. Being known as the 14, so David Tennant taking two slots in the timeline. Why not? Sure. I mean, look... We all know David Tennant's going to smash it because of how amazing an actor he is in anything he does. But I'll admit, him being another number is cheeky. But as a David Tennant fan, I'm not going to argue. <laughs> Any other answers? I think he'll bring a lot of uh, people back. Um, I was talking to a friend of mine who said that even his brother and his family have all just, they sat down and watched it as well. And uh, they're in their 30s, these people, you know, and then his parents are older, obviously. And they absolutely love the idea that he's back and they're going to be into it. I think Russell's doing a bit of, he's using this, we all love or hate Jodie Whittaker. I think the series has been a bit mixed. But I think Russell geniusly is using the 60th to bring nostalgia back, to bring back David Tennant, to bring back an audience again and then give Shooty the biggest start, jump start going. And I think that's a genius move. Absolutely. So David Tennant's really just a caretaker. And, mm -hmm. uh, but a very good caretaker. A very, very good and caretaker. And he just didn't want to go. He didn't. <laughs> and now here he is again. Luke, Meg, anything you'll add? I think I prefer him coming back as like a new number rather than having 10 back. I think like, the idea of having like him being slightly different and not just playing the 10th Doctor is quite good. It's kind of more experimental as well. And plus his costume's really nice. Oh, it's super <laughs> good. Have we all had a look at the new costume? How many of us really wanted to just wear the coat? Like, I know there's someone there to stop you, but yeah, exactly. There's someone there, but you would absolutely steal it if no one was looking. Yeah, exactly. Uh, Will, anything to add? Um, yeah, I think when it comes to the numbering, don't take it too seriously, because he's technically maybe Doctor 18 at this point. It's, uh, but when it comes to him coming back, it's a logistical thing. You were mentioning earlier, Russell able to work around these creative hurdles. Shooty was filming the Barbie movie last summer. He's doing sex education at the moment. The show, not the profession. And when it comes to, like, it, he, you want something for the 60th, 
So he's got a great working relationship with Tennant, obviously. Catherine Tate's coming back. We're going to have uh, Bernard Cribbins again for a special. Woo! Uh, Rachel Talali's back, of course. Some new directors as well. Chanya Button, and I forget the name of the third. Uh, but yeah, creatively, I, I'm interested in what he does. But the logistically, production-wise, it's a clever move. Oh, absolutely. Luke, anything to add? I'm excited to see him back as 14, and I'm happy he's 14. Yeah. Um, obviously, we've had the curator. We know that the Doctor can pick old favourites, so it's... It's going to be interesting to see how different he plays it. Yeah. Or whether there is going to be little bits going back to 10. Maybe he'll be more vain. <laughs> Wouldn't that be good? <laughs> no, fantastic. Any other questions? Any other questions? Oh, we got one around the side. Oh, yep, this will be the last question, so make it a good one. Oh, which one was it? I couldn't tell. You. What's your name? Uh, Alex. And it's kind of for everyone, and I think it's quite perfectly the last question, is uh, what's your favorite regeneration line? Oh, okay. All right. We're going to do this quick fire. So, f what, final line of the Doctor. Which, what's our favourite final line? Will? Um, apart from carrot juice, um, we've got a, I, I do love Tag Your It. It's so playful. It's so fun. Uh, off the top of my head, yeah, I think Tag Your It because it's short, snappy, optimistic, and playful. I think you, you embrace the regeneration to come. Very nice. Luke? It's Capaldi's last line. Is it, uh, Doctor, I let you go? Yeah, yeah very good choice. Was, you could tell it was personal. It, it wasn't just the character. That was Peter Capaldi speaking. Absolutely. Yeah. Meg? I like Tenants, who says, I don't want to go. Because someone said... Is it because it's the most accurate? Because Yeah, and with him returning, when he regenerates, you're like, maybe he'll kind of be quite happy or like, you yeah. know, accepting the fact that he's regenerating. So it might be like a little circle. Oh, very nice, very nice. And Chris? Um... It's a tie. Ooh. There's Tom Baker's brilliant one of It's the End, but at the moment it's been prepared for. But I also like Patrick Troughton's final little wa wa uh, wavering around and everything. Is, oh, oh, what's happening? Oh, I'm getting it giddy. Oh, we got the Troughton oh, no. impression. Oh, Yay! No. You can't do this to me! <laughs> and my one is uh, from the TV movie where McCoy just goes, ah! That's it. That's mine. And ladies and gentlemen, that's our time! Enjoy the rest of your con! And thank you so much to Jack yeah, for having thank us. Thank you. Thank you very much. Don't forget to subscribe to the official Jack Reeves YouTube channel. Thank <laughs> you.